Hi YouTube, um, it's me. I'm back again with another chem walk. Uh, this time I'm finding myself um, in Central Park in New York City um, by, I guess, North Woods here um, by the lock area. It's a really nice, quiet, um, calm area. And today the thought on my mind has been about free energy. Um, I recently had this, this interesting revelation about what free energy really is. Um, and I want to, I want to describe that to you all. So when I'm talking about free energy here, I'm talking about like things like Gibbs free energy, which people who have taken high school chemistry, um, you might remember Gibbs free energy is equal to Delta H minus T Delta S or Delta G equals Delta H minus T Delta S. Um, there's also Helmholtz free energy. Um, usually Delta F is equal to uh, Delta E or Delta U minus T Delta S. Um, and they're similar, but different in some ways. Um, and what I really want to get to is what are these weird quantities that we just sort of randomly define in, in thermodynamics and why are they called free energy? Let's start with a simpler case of the formula for Helmholtz free energy. Um, this is usually not taught in a lot of high school chemistry classes, um, but I find it a little bit easier to explain. So Helmholtz free energy, um, which we write as F, is equal to U minus TS, right, without the deltas here. So U is going to be the internal energy of some kind of system that we're describing here. And that internal energy you can think of as the total energy of that system. So that's going to be its potential plus kinetic energy. Every type of energy you can imagine is all in that internal energy term. So it's sort of the total energy. And then this TS here is temperature times the entropy of the system. Okay. And so now let's add in the deltas where we're saying delta F is equal to delta U minus T delta S. Now, the key to understanding what free energy is, is in this last term here, the T delta S. So as I mentioned, T is temperature, and delta S is the change in entropy of our system over our process. So the cool thing about entropy is that a lot of times entropy can be written in terms of heat transfer of a process. Um, so we can often write delta S is equal to Q over T, or more specifically, Q reversible or T, Q rev. Um, I won't get into the, to the details of this formula. There are a lot of nuance with this, and and you know this is true in, in some cases for in other words reversible processes, but not in others. But I won't get into that. So the key here is to think of entropy or the change in ent entropy of a system as being related to the heat transferred in or out of the system, or you can think of it as heat transferred to the system over a process. Essentially, if you transfer heat to a system, entropy goes up, right? Delta S is greater than zero. Um, you can think of that as sort of like entropy being, you know, a description of disorder. And as you transfer heat, the molecules start moving faster. And then in other words, or you can think of them as being more disordered. If the heat comes out of a system, in other words, Q is negative, uh, delta S is negative. And so, again, the, the intuition here is thinking of... Uh, of entropy as being related to heat transfer. The change in entropy of a process being related to the uh, heat that is transferred over that, um, during that process to or from the system. So this is the key. Heat, we think of, and this, this has to do with the second law of thermodynamics here, that if you have a cold object touching a hot object, the hot object will transfer its heat, in other words, transfer its temperature almost, um, to the cold object until their temperatures are equal, right? Until they equilibrate. So the idea here is, you know, the second law of thermodynamics, which is telling us that um, essentially heat flows from hot to cold, right? From high temperatures to low temperatures. And this is sort of like a natural process, right? There's, there's no way that we can, you know, as humans, um, as mortals in this world, uh, alter it really heat will always go from, from hot to cold. So, that, so, that, so that's heat. Um, and heat is sort of uh, an entropy and sort of describes the, the inevitable transfer of energy that occurs as a result of heat transfer. 
So, so now if we go back to this free energy term, this uh, definition, um, Helmholtz free energy, which is delta F equals uh, delta U minus T delta S, right? This T delta S term, well, it describes the heat. You know, remember delta S is equal to Q reversible T multiplied by T, you get T delta S is Q reversible. So, you know, you can think of this T delta S term as the heat transfer of the process. And again, there's more nuance to it than this, um, but this is just developing the intuition here. And so you can think of free energy as now that we've subtracted that the energy associated with the transfer of heat from the total internal energy change, now our free energy is essentially all of the energy change of our system that is not associated with heat transfer, that is not heat transfer. And any of that, any other energy that is in heat transfer is essentially uh, a useful type of energy, a work. Um, we often think of work as a mechanical property. In other words, like you can do work on an object. Oh. I had to pause there real quick. Um, you can think of work as um, sort of a mechanical property. So a mechanical change in energy, right? We can do work um, on like, I used this description before, but on like a box. Um, if you're pushing a box from point A to point B, you're doing work on it. And so work is sort of this mechanical energy change, while heat is sort of this inevitable uh, energy transfer that occurs as a result of temperature, solely as a result of temperature. So now free energy is going to be um, subtracting off that heat term. And so now what you're left with usually um, is free energy in, in one condition or another being equivalent to the useful work that can be transferred uh, from that that can be uh, that is done or we often say that can be extracted from a system so what you'll hear a lot of times in 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 like uh, a high school chemistry class is to be uh, uh, the free energy is the uh, is equal to the amount of useful reversible work that can be extracted from a process which is true but it's it's really only it's it's only a useful description if you understand the idea that you know this t delta s term is related to heat. It is the heat transfer, and that heat transfer is a transfer of energy that is inevitable. It's not something that we can control. It's a result of the second law of thermodynamics. It's not, it's oftentimes it's not particularly useful in generating energy, what we, what we normally think is energy, um, but it is a type of energy. Uh, and so if we remove that type of energy, now you're left with what, you know, you can think of it as the free energy or the energy not associated with heat transfer, the energy that can be used to do some useful work. Um, so yeah, that's my, my, my rambling on, uh, on free energy. I hope that that description was useful to some of you out there um, and I'll see you in the next Kim Walk. If after watching that, you're still feeling confused, don't worry, I get it. This stuff is hard to grasp. If you want more practice with it, I highly recommend today's sponsor, Brilliant. Brilliant is an online platform where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and now even AI. Brilliant's uniquely designed platform combines first principles approaches with interactive lessons that make learning both effective and fun. One of my favorite courses on Brilliant is their course on calculus. It goes through each concept step by step while providing interactive problems, giving you time to build intuition through practice. So sign up today at brilliant.org slash foolishchemist and try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days. You'll also get 20% off their annual premium subscription by using this link. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.